that's a hard no for me, dog. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Seed, and we'll be taking a look at controversial psychologist Jordan Peterson and the carnivore diet. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Seed. So I talk about the importance of gut health all the time, and a lot of people ask me my opinion on pre and probiotics. So probiotics are of course the good gut bacteria, and prebiotics are the food that feed the bacteria, but both are important for a healthy microbiome. So I like Seed's Daily Symbiotic because you get both a pre and a probiotic in one capsule together with 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains. The way they've engineered their capsule ensures 100% delivery of the probiotic to your colon, so you really do reap the benefits. Most probiotics end up dying in your stomach acid, so if you've taken a probiotic before and felt no difference, it's likely because it just wasn't surviving the harsh environments of our GI tract. So seed is different in this regard. Now we have evidence that a healthy gut with an optimal balance of good bacteria can help digestive issues like bloating and constipation, immune health, heart health, skin health, and so much more. I also love that they're sustainably delivered every month. So you get a refillable glass jar with your first purchase and the monthly refills are delivered in compostable, biodegradable and recyclable packaging. So if you wanna check out Seed yourself, you can get 15% off of your first month's supply of Seed's Daily Symbiotic by clicking the link in the description box and using my code Abby at checkout. And you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. So as usual, feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey, as we will be discussing a very restrictive diet. And if you are not already subscribed here, hit that sub button and follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. So Jordan Peterson is a Canadian psychologist who's really no stranger to ruffling a few feathers for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to even touch politics today because I have enough to talk about with his endorsement of the carnivore diet on the Joe Rogan show. <sighs> I know, a lot of spice in one sentence right there. No, but seriously, if you are wondering what the f you eat on a carnivore diet, well, according to Jordan Peterson, I eat beef and salt and water. Buckle up babies, let's dive in and debunk some of the pro carnivore claims he makes on the show. Claim number one, the carnivore diet results in weight loss. Then I lost seven pounds the first month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. I lost seven pounds every month for seven months. It's like I'd throw away all my clothes. I lost 50 pounds. I'm nowhere near as hungry as I used to be. My appetite's probably fallen by 70%. So this weight loss definitely does sound extreme, but not that surprising when you really think about it. So for one, this diet is just fat and protein, which are two macronutrients that are very satiating because they delay stomach emptying and digest slower than let's say simple carbs. Also, a diet of literally just one food or food group with no sauce or garnishes, side dishes, etc., is going to get so boring and monotonous that it's pretty hard to overeat. A lot of folks would just end up eating the bare minimum to keep the hunger pains at bay because eating like a second porterhouse is probably going to seem like a huge chore when you've already had a T-bone for lunch. And while I would argue that all fad weight loss diets are unsustainable, the carnivore diet really takes the cake. For one, it's expensive as f To meet 2000 calories in steaks, you're looking at at least $25 or more per day. Second, you have very little opportunity for any socializing around food. Unless you're dining in a steakhouse where they're cool with you swapping out your potato for a side of salt, it seems you're pretty much doomed to just dine alone at home for life. There's been a mistake. You've accidentally given me the food that my food eats. And three, there are a whole host of not so sexy side effects that I'm gonna speak to in a moment. Not to mention, when you inevitably throw in the towel on this miserable exercise, you'd not only gain all the weight right back, but you'd also probably be faced with overwhelming digestive problems as your body is forced to really quickly upregulate all of the enzymes that were suppressed from your monomial lifestyle. And is weight loss really so 
so important when your health and legit life is at stake? <laughs> No pun intended. We know that a diet that's very high in red meat is associated with increased risks of colorectal, breast, and prostate cancer. And we also know that ultra high protein diets, especially those high in red meat, can strain our kidneys and increase calcium loss. And while the evidence on the impact of saturated fats is controversial and mixed, as I discussed in my video right here, we do know that high intakes of saturated fat from red meat specifically does appear to increase the risk of heart disease by increasing trimethylamine and oxide. It also goes without saying that a meat only diet can only displace like really f important nutrients like fiber, vitamin C, and other antioxidants that are largely found in plant-based foods. And we know that a diet completely void of fiber can have negative implications for our microbiome, while low intakes of antioxidants like vitamin C carries increased risks to health. But according to Jordan Peterson, the lack of vitamin C from the carnivore diet is a non-issue. Which brings me to claim number two, you don't need vitamin C. I would assume that you need phytonutrients. I would assume you need vi vitamin supplements. Like vitamin C, for example. Yes. Turns out if you don't eat carbohydrates, you don't need vitamin C. Huh, who would have guessed that? How does that work? Vitamin C is necessary for carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, not quite. Like most vitamins and minerals, vitamin C serves more than just one function in the body. So for example, it's involved in collagen and neurotransmitter production, immune function, wound healing, iron absorption, and it's also anti-inflammatory due to its antioxidant properties. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't knock the importance of vitamin C as strictly just a metabolizer. Plus, vitamin C is actually involved in protein metabolism by playing an important role in the synthesis of collagen, L-carnitine, catecholamines, and other proteins. This is why vitamin C is essential for wound repair and healthy brain function, along with a ton of other things. With that said, what happens when you're not getting any vitamin C from the carnivore diet? Well, of course, this would have immunological, cognitive, and dermatological consequences. And in extreme cases, you could develop scurvy, which results in symptoms of fatigue, inflammation, depression, and in some cases, even death. Maybe it's none of my business, but if you eat three pounds of steak every day, you're gonna die. However, proponents of the carnivore diet argue that you can apparently obtain enough vitamin C from a meat-only diet to prevent scurvy. And while they're technically not wrong here, since research on Inuit communities suggest that one can obtain vitamin C from animal organs and raw meat, you would have to eat a lot of meat. So for example, you can eat 770 grams of raw beef liver to get a pathetic 10 milligrams of vitamin C, or you can take a single bite out of an orange. Your choice. So while carnivore dieters may have hacked their way into preventing scurvy by eating more organ meats, it's very unlikely that they would be hitting the 90 milligram daily vitamin C recommendation, which you can get in like half a bell pepper without inadvertently throwing everything else out of whack. Lastly, proponents of the carnivore diet are quick to rag on vegetables for their anti-nutrient properties. Jordan Peterson never explicitly spoke about this on the podcast app, but I do really want to quickly debunk this since we're all here and it does come up quite often. Now it is true that some vegetables, legumes, and whole grains do contain anti-nutrients that reduce the absorption of some vitamins and minerals. But in general, anti-nutrients are not a major threat to our health and the foods that contain them also contain beneficial nutrients like fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants. Plus, a lot of the anti-nutrient content contained in certain foods is also greatly reduced just by cooking them. Ah, yes, civilization has its perks. So moving on to claim number three, carnivorism can cure anxiety and depression. Quit eating greens. And I thought, oh, really? Jesus, Michaela, I'm eating cucumbers, lettuce, broccoli, and chicken and beef. It's like, I have to cut out the goddamn greens? It's like, try it for a month. Okay, within a week, I was 25% less anxious in the morning. Within two weeks, 75%, and I've been better every single day. I'm better now, probably, than I've ever been in my life, and I haven't been taking antidepressants for a whole year. Listen, what works for one person's mental health is not going to work for another, so I will never belittle someone's lived experience. But what does the data say? Well, there was really only one retrospective study on the carnivore diet, which used self-reported data, AKA 
pretty much the biased bottom of the barrel when it comes to study design quality. But anyways, so any effect that the carnivore diet may have on mood disorders like anxiety and depression is largely anecdotal and not evidence-based. However, we do have some research on the effects of the keto diet for depression. And given that the carnivore diet is essentially like a higher protein version of the keto diet in that it eliminates carbs and puts the body into a state of ketosis, it does does give us a better idea of what might be going on neurologically. So research suggests that the keto diet may help to improve symptoms of anxiety and depression by increasing circulating levels of the neurotransmitter GABA, which plays a key role in managing stress, anxiety, and mood. However, more research is needed to fully understand this mechanism before we can like recommend the keto diet as a legitimate treatment for mood disorders. And even if we did have more research to recommend this, as like a possible adjunct therapy, it would never be recommended that you only eat meat. There's really nothing miraculous about a ribeye steak that will cure your depression. You would still be able to eat a variety of other keto-friendly foods other than meat, like vegetables, nuts, seeds, fish, and dairy. And you'd probably be happier if you weren't constipated or losing your teeth due to scurvy or malnutrition. So not today. In fact, research suggests that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables is associated with a lower risk of depression. So yeah, the logic here just doesn't check out. But back to Peterson for a hot moment because I do find that his testimony is very powerful. So what could possibly explain his unique ability to get off his meds? Well, honestly, there's a lot to be unsure about in the world of mental health research. But one thing is pretty clear that the placebo effect is real. We have lots of compelling evidence on the power of placebo for anxiety and depression because a positive placebo experience can increase mood neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. And despite a lot of heated controversy and debate, we even have studies to suggest that placebo medication may actually produce the same effect as actual antidepressant pharmaceuticals. Now, another potential explanation here is that Peterson's autoimmune disease made him uniquely and legitimately sensitive to a number of different foods, which he effectively removed due to the nature of his very restrictive diet. And that brings me to my next point. Claim number four, carnivorism cures autoimmune diseases. And my psoriasis disappeared. I've had gum disease since I was 25. That's been serious enough to have, I've had to have minor surgical interventions, scraping and that sort of thing to keep it at bay. It's gone. I checked with my dentist before this last tour. No inflammation. So as I discussed in my video on downshiftology, which you can watch right here, autoimmune diseases are complicated as f but simply put, an autoimmune disease is a condition where the immune system attacks part of the body that it mistakes as foreign, even though they're otherwise perfectly healthy cells. So the first step in alleviating autoimmune disease symptoms would be to lower the chronic inflammation and ultimately get the gut in check to help downregulate this autoimmune response. But because there's no standard diet protocol for most autoimmune diseases, it ends up being a lot of trial and error to be able to kind of like pin down the specific food triggers, which should ideally be done through an elimination diet under the supervision of a registered dietitian. So the fact that George Jordan Peterson claims to have effectively eliminated his gum disease and his psoriasis symptoms likely has less to do with anything miraculous in the meat and more to do with the fact that he's eliminating all other foods, a few of which may be triggering for him. In other words, we don't need to eliminate all vegetables when only broccoli and cauliflower are the ones triggering symptoms. A limited diet, especially one devoid of fiber, is the absolute worst diet for a healthy microbiome. And a healthy microbiome is really the key to long-term remission from autoimmune or inflammatory conditions. One of the th hypotheses that we've been pursuing, and there's some justification for this in the scientific literature, is that the reason that you lay on layers of fat is because the fat acts as a buffer between you and the toxic things that you're eating. And maybe when you strip out that protective layer, then you're more sensitive to what you shouldn't be eating. Nope, 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 nope. Time to go back to the drawing board on the hypothesis here, Doc. Science, damn you. First of all, your body fat doesn't metabolize food, your digestive system does. 
most importantly, your gut. And your gut plays a very important role in regulating autoimmune disease symptoms. But what we most often see in folks with autoimmune disease is a weakening of the integrity of the gut, which often results in intestinal permeability, otherwise known as leaky gut. This is why it's so important to focus on nutrients that support gut barrier function, like omega-3 fats, vitamin D, probiotics, and antioxidant-rich foods. It's also just as important to focus on food variety to support a diverse microbiome. And surprise, surprise, that is not possible on a meat only diet. With all that said, it's important to note that Jordan Peterson's experience and success on the carnivore diet is highly individualized and likely has to do with severe food sensitivities and intolerances to a lot of the foods that he cut out. And while there is a very small possibility that beef is the only food that is well tolerated for him, although highly unlikely, it's important to keep in mind that one individual's unusual experience does not build a case for universal adoption. Ultimately, the carnivore diet is overwhelmingly restrictive, unsustainable, void of essential nutrients like fiber and antioxidants, and increases the risk of negative health consequences like scurvy, heart disease, cancer, and poor gut health. You don't have to be an Abby stan to know that this is a hard pass for me. So on that note, I'm gonna go eat a banana right now. That is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you again to Seed for sponsoring. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with what you would like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.